Okay, good morning guys. Sorry I'm not here today. I had some business, business to attend to, so, uh, but I will see you tomorrow. Um, what we're looking at today is we're looking at composite functions. And composite functions are crafty little critters, but we'll first look at combination functions, which are adding, subtracting, and multiplying, um, before we get into composite functions. And the first thing we're going to do with the warm-up is we're going to have you graphically evaluate what f of negative 2 is. So this is the graph of f of x. So if I need to know what f of negative 2 is, I go to the x-axis where negative 2 is here, and I follow up my graph, and then I bring it across and see, oh, f of negative 2 is 1. This is my g of x graph here. If I'm evaluating g of negative 1 on the graph, I'll come across the negative 1. I'll follow that down to my graph cross-reference it to the y and see that that's negative 3. So that's pretty self-explanatory how we uh, go about graphically evaluating the function. So what do we do when we have to take f plus g of negative 2? How the heck is that 1? Well, here's my f of x function. Here's my g of x function. And when I'm looking at f plus g of negative 2, that's saying the same thing as what is f of negative 2 plus g of negative 2. And how I get that is I find f of negative 2. So I go to the negative 2 on my x-axis, and I get up, and I can see f of negative 2 is 1 plus g of negative 2. g of negative 2 is 0, and 1 plus 0 equals 1. So that is how f plus g of negative 2 equals 1. Well, what if I subtract them? Well, these are combination functions. g minus f of 1, that's g of 1 minus f of 1, and I'll graphically evaluate g of negative 1 is down here at 3, minus f of negative 1, now I'll go to my negative 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, and that's how that one works out. Well, what is f times g of negative 1? Well, that's f of negative 1 times g of negative 1. How does that 3? Well, go to my f, negative 1. I get 1, and that will get multiplied times g of negative 1, which happens to be negative 3. So that is how 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. That is how it becomes that way. Now, number 4 here, number 4 is a composition function, and it's f of g of 2. How is that 5? Well, what I first need to do is I need to evaluate my inner piece of the function, so I need to find what g of 2 is first. So well, g of 2 is 0, and now I have to find what f of 0 is, and when I go to my f graph at 0 and I come up here at 5, that is how f of g of 2 is 5. Okay, so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you try these four here quick. Pause the video, try to do these four quick, and I will have the answers for you as soon as you get back. So hopefully you've uh, given these three a shot, or these four, excuse me, a shot. And when I'm looking for f plus g of 0, I'm going to find out it's 5 here. And when I'm looking for f minus g of negative 1, that result ends up coming out to 4 f times g of negative 2 is 0. And now the composite function, f of g of negative 2, remember we first need to evaluate where g, what g is at negative 2, which was 0. Then i got to find f of 0 was 5. Okay. So hopefully you did all right on those. And what we're going to do is we're going to be evaluating here um, all four of these composite functions. Okay. Although we do combine a lot of functions in many ways, our main focus today that we're looking at is on composition functions, which is like number four of the previous two examples. Uh, the idea is basically that we want to use, <clears throat> excuse me, the output from one function as the input for another one. Okay, another way to write f of g of x, where f of g is zero, is going to be f of g of 0. How it's written up here, it's written as, I like to call that as fog with that little down. Now, because that's an open circle, that's not a multiplication. Now, if I had to evaluate f of g of 0, 
what I really have to do is I have to find what g of 0 is first. So I'll go to g of 0 and I find out that that is 0. And then that 0 gets plugged into the f function. And then f of 0 actually equals 5. Okay? So really what we want to do is we're seeing number 2, g of f of g of f of 0, better known up here as I call it Goff, what I need to do is I need to find out what f of 0 is first. Well, f of 0, I can tell off my f of x graph up here. I can tell that that's 5. I hence need to use that because that's what f of 0 is. So now that needs to go into the g function. And g of 5, what does g of 5 equal? Well, when I come out here on my x-axis where 5 is, and I kind of look to see, hey, there's no graph there. My graph never hits out there where g is 5, so this one does not exist and because there is no graph. Okay, so that's why f of g of 0 does not exist. Well, how about g of g of 0? This is GOG, if you want to call it that. Excuse me. So this is g of g of 0. What I need to do is first evaluate what g of 0 is. So g of 0 is going to equal uh, 0. Then what I need to do is I need to take that 0 and I need to plug it into my outer function because here's my outer function and here's my inner function. I evaluate inner function first and whatever that spits out goes into the outer function. And again, I get a 0 on this one. Well, let's take a little gander at the very last one that we have here. What is f of f of 0? Okay, these are all graphically, we're getting all of these off the graph. So I know the first f of 0 is I can come up here in my graph and I can see that that's 5. So then what I need to do is I need to plug that 5 back in to the function. And when I come out here at 5, again, here this one, I can see how this is a chopped off polynomial really in that it does it's not continuous because it doesn't keep going it stops but out here at five okay there is nothing out there so this one does not exist as well and the reason it doesn't exist is because there is no graph out there okay so what we will do is we're going to come to our next page here, and I apologize I'm going kind of quick, but I don't want to waste your time with long explanations. So what we're going to do, okay, it was easy to evaluate f of g of 4 off of the graph because we could just look at the graph to see what g of 4 would output. But if I don't have the graph, let's look at f of x being defined as negative 2x plus 3, and g of x is defined as 5 minus x squared. Well, if I knew f of g of 4 equal 25, how the heck does that happen? Well, that happens by first finding what is g of 4. Well, g of 4 is found by taking 5 minus 4 and then squaring it, which actually equals 5 minus 16. 5 minus 16 is negative 11. I then need to take this output, and I need to put it into the outer function, which is the f, and then I'll put the f into my f function here, which is negative 2 times negative 11 plus 3 gives me what? 22 plus 3. So that gives me a value of 25. So when we're doing composite functions, we evaluate the inner function first. We find out what it equals. g of 4 ended up equaling negative 11. And then we had to plug that negative 11 into f and we found out that was 25 okay so we'll pop out these last two well g of f of 4 equals negative 20 how does that work well we need to evaluate the outer function first f of 4 is found by taking negative 2 times 4 plus 3 well heck that equals negative 8 plus 3 so that equals negative 5 so f of 4 
is outputting 5, and then that, ne or excuse me, negative 5, and then that negative 5 needs to be inputted into my g function. And then my g function down here is going to be 5 minus, careful here, negative 5 squared. Well, that gives me 5 minus 25. And my 5 minus 25, that gives me negative 20 is how that one evaluates out. Okay, very last one, f of f of negative 2. I need to plug negative 2 into, first I'll find it into the f function. So that's going to be negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3. Well, that's going to output 4 plus 3 or 7, right? So now that I know that that's outputting 7, that 7 now needs to be put back into the f function because that's the one on the outside as well. And that's going to give me negative 2 times 7 plus 3. Well, heck, that's negative 14 plus 3, or that equals negative 11. So that's how we will evaluate composite functions with that. So I'm going to hit pause here again, all right? I'm going to hit pause here and I'm going to let you guys try these next four and then I'm just going to have the answers up here for you when I come back that you can quickly check them and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so if you come back here, what we're going to see is first we need to evaluate g of 2 and what g of 2 outputs is 1 and then 1 gets put into f of x, and then f of x will output 1. So when I'm looking at g of f of negative 5, I need to evaluate f of negative 5 first. So when I plug negative 5 into f, I see it outputs 13, which then I plug the 13 into the outer function g, and then that outputs negative 164. And number three, it's f of f of three. So I plug three into the f function, and that outputs a negative three, which then gets plugged back into the f function to output nine. And the very last one, g of g of three, I'll plug three into the g function. It outputs negative four, which then gets plugged into the g function, which outputs negative 11. So hopefully you're catching on how to evaluate these comp composition functions. And we're going to do a couple new ones here. A little bit, little bit more practice here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite, because I'm not going to do example one or example two. Those are baby examples again. So what I want to do is I want to evaluate, and I want to see what I have, my 1 half x plus 4, and my g of x function is also negative 6 times x minus 2. What I want to do is I want to look at uh, number 3 here. And what number 3 is, is it's saying evaluate the g function at point c, or when you put c into the g function. Okay, well let's do that. That means g of c. All that means is we're taking our g of x function up here, which is negative 6x minus 2. Anywhere in this function, we see an x. We are erasing that x. And we are inputting what my function is telling me to put in as a c. And as I can, no pun intended, see here, negative 6c minus 2, these are not like terms. But that's what I get when I evaluate c in g. Well, now, I need to evaluate that into my f function. So now I need to put negative 6 c minus 2 into my f function because it's on the outside. Well, people get confused when we're plugging in entire expressions into functions. So what we're going to do is we want to see our f function. Our f function is actually 1 half x plus 4. And what we need to do is everywhere in that f function we see an x, we need to get rid of that x. And in place of that x, we need to plug in exactly what it's telling me to, which is negative 6c minus 2. Now I'm just going to simplify this. So I'll distribute my half to both of these. And I'm going to see I get negative 3c minus 1 plus 4. I can see I have a couple like terms to put together here. So this is going to equal negative 3c plus 
3. That is what, kind of confusing, but that is what f of g of c is evaluating to. Let's try one more of those down here quick. What is g of f of x? Well, hey, look at that. That f of x function, I already know what that is. That's almost a straightforward substitution. So that's saying take g, and when I plug an x into my function, I have 1 half x plus 4. So I'm just going to say 1 half x plus 4. Now I need to plug that into my g function. And my g function is negative 6x. And I'm going to leave myself a little room, minus 2, because I know that I'm going to be coming back here. I'm going to be erasing that x. And in place of that x, I'm going to plug in what it tells me to, which is 1 half x plus 4. After I plug it in, I'm going to evaluate as much as I can. So this is going to equal negative 3x minus 24 minus 2. I have like terms again. So this will equal negative 3x minus 26. So this is what g of f of x equals. Now it gets confusing because now we're plugging things into a function and we're not getting a number out, we're getting a whole expression out. And the further in math you go, that is what happens and there's lots of reasons why. So let's just try a couple new functions here. We're gonna define h of x as x minus six and j of x is gonna be the rational expression 1 over x plus 4. Well, what is h of j of x? Well, I know j of x is right here. So if I took my h of x function and I put 1 over x plus 4 into it, what I'm going to have is I'm taking my h function, which is x minus 6, and I need to come back and for all my x's in my h function, I need to replace those with a 1, I want to do that in red, sorry, with a 1 over x plus 4. Well, heck, I can see this is a, I got to add two fractions now. So I got to see my 6 over 1, and the bottom needs an x plus 4, and the top needs an x plus 4. And here's what a lot of people did wrong in their summatives. They totally forgot to distribute that negative to whoever is on the top of that. And what ends up happening is I get 1 over x plus 4 plus negative 6x minus 24 over x plus 4. Now my denominators are the same. So now I can just combine my numerators and I end up with negative 6x minus 23 over x plus 4, and I get a whole new, whole new expression, okay? Well, what happens if I'm taking j and I'm plugging h into it? Well, then I got to start with my j function on the outside, and when I plug h into it, my h function is x minus 6. So this time I'm starting with the outer function j, which is 1 over x plus 4. Everywhere I see an x, that little bugger needs to be replaced with my whole x minus 6. And after I plug it in, now I just simplify some things. I see I have like terms in the denominator down here. So this equals 1 over x minus 2. And there's nothing else I can do. So that is the composition function of h of j of x. Well, number 3, let's give number 3. What is h of h of x? So that says take h. Now let's plug out what h of x is in there. h of x is x minus 6. So now I'm going to take my outer function h, which is x minus 6. And everywhere I see an x in here, I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to plug in what they tell me to, which is x minus 6. And then I'm just going to simplify things out. Well, this equals x minus 12. So h of h of x is x minus 12. All right, now we come down to the beast. And the beast is j of j of x, okay? Well, here we go. This says j, and inside my j of x function here, if I remember right, it's 1 over x plus 4. 
So now I got to take my outer function j to start with, 1 over x plus 4. Everywhere I see that x in the function, I need to grab my eraser. I'm going to get rid of it, and I'm going to plug in what they're telling me to plug in here, which is 1 over x plus 4. And then we get a big, ugly, complex fraction. But still, this complex fraction, I can see the denominator here needs to be put together. So I know this denominator needs an x plus 4 and an x plus 4. So what's going to happen is this is going to equal 1 over 1 over x plus 4 plus 4x plus 16 over x plus 4. This is going to equal, and I'm going to squirrel them right down here. Now I can combine the denominators down here of the main big fraction. That's going to give me 1 over, <clears throat> that's going to be what? 4x plus 17 over x plus 4. Now I have a complex fraction. Now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I'm going to see the top of the fraction is 1 over 1 times, flip that little bugger down, and that's going to give me a 4x plus 17. When I multiply these fractions, remember multiplying is top times top, bottom times bottom, gives me an x plus 4 over 4x plus 17. And that is my composition function of that, and nothing ended up reducing for me. So, as we move along, that was a beastly little critter. You'll have a couple of those, or at least one on your summative. The question of the day is, is coming along, okay, as we're plugging functions into functions, do my domains may mean anything to me, okay? Are there restrictions uh, when I'm finding uh, these composition functions, which means, well, let's consider our functions, these two, x minus 6 and j of x is 1 over x plus 4. Well, h of x has no, well, that's bad, no, h of x has no restrictions. The reason is, is it's a linear function y equals mx plus b, the nature of linear functions, they are continuous, they are, their domain is all real numbers, therefore no restrictions. j of x, however, j of x is a rational function up here. And when we look at j of x, there is a value we can never plug in there, isn't there? So j of x cannot receive x equaling negative 4, because x equaling negative 4 will give me 1 over 0, which is undefined. So the domain of my j function is all real numbers x except negative 4. And my domain of my h of x function is all real numbers. Well, what happens when I combine these functions? What happens when I compose these functions and plug one into the other. So how does that relate to the comp composition of a function? Well, let's take a little peek here. We're going to find h of h of j of negative 4 if we can. So what we're going to do first is we obviously, again, we have to evaluate the inner function. So what is j of negative 4? Well, j of negative 4 is 1 over negative 4 plus 4. Well, heck, that's 1 over 0. That is undefined, which means I cannot evaluate this thing. It cannot be found. And the reason it can't be found is because it's undefined. I get a divide by 0, and we can't do that. Okay? Okay. Well, let's find h of j of x. Well, let's find h of j of x. h of j of x. What does this little bugger look like? Well, that says start with the h function. We're going to put 1 over x plus 4 into it. So now I'm going to start with 
my h function, which is x minus 6. And we found this on the previous page, but I'm going to get rid of my x, and I am plugging in my 1 over x plus 4 to plug it in there. I'm like, oh, got to have common denominators. So I'm going to get my x plus 4 over my x plus 4. And what I'm going to find is this little bugger equals 1 over x plus 4. And again, I didn't do it right away, but I'd say plus, and I'd give that negative, I'd give that 6 my negative, so I can look at this as an addition problem. And when I distribute here, I get negative 6x minus 24 over x plus 4. Well, that's going to equal, now I can combine my numerator, so I get negative 6x minus 23 over x plus 4. So when I find that, now when I look at this composition of h of j of x, I can see, here's my composition, and I can also see my domain is all real numbers x except negative 4. So I can't plug a negative 4 in there because that still stayed, stayed down there, okay? Well, let's move on to our next one here. Well, what about j of h of negative 4? Can I get that one? Well, let's find out. Well, that means I'm evaluating h of negative 4. So h of negative 4 equals negative 4 minus 6, correct? So what that should be giving me, that should be giving me negative 10. That negative 10 is hence going to get plugged into the j function because that gets plugged into the outside function. And I get my negative 10. And when I plug it in, I get 1 over negative 10 plus 4. Well, that gives me 1 over negative 6. So that's negative 1, 6. So when I reverse the roles of my composition function and I plug 4 into h first and then into j, notice how h, when I plug it into there, h changes at negative 4 because it's an output value for the h function and it makes a new input value for the j function. So I was able to do that. Am I able to find what j of h of 2 is. Well, let's give it a shot. h of 2 is going to equal 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. Then I got to take that negative 4 value and I need to plug it into the j value. And I think we just found before that when I'm plugging negative 4 into j, I am getting undefined, which gives me 1 over 0, which is un defined. I can't plug that in. So what happens is j of h of 2 can't be found because it makes it undefined. And when I looked all the way up here in the top, uh, actually I think it was on the previous page, um, I was unable to find h of j of negative 4. Okay. Well, how is this changing? How can my function be undefined in two different places? Well, Let's find j of h of x once, okay? Well, let's plug that hole. We did it once already, but that's okay. We'll find it j of h of x. We'll do it really quick. So that's saying j, and my h of x function is x minus 6. So that's going to give me my 1 over x plus 4, right? And now I need to plug in, so I'm going to erase that guy, I need to plug in my x minus 6. And when I evaluate this function, I see that uh, what happens is I get 1 over x minus 2. Well, so what does that mean? Well, this is a brand new rational function, and the domain for this brand new rational function is all real numbers x except 2. So that means, what it means is, is when I plug in a value for my h of x function, whatever value I put into my h of x function, if that is going to make it output a 2, that is going to make the j function receive a negative 4, is basically what it means. Okay. So 
The domains get kind of kind of complicated here on this, but if you don't don't overcomplicate it. If I have all I ask is that you ask me questions when I get back on Thursday a little bit. If we have some, we'll have time to work. Um, all this will be on your formative on Friday, covering 9.0 and 9.1. So what we're going to do quick is we're going to summarize. What do you need to check when examining composite functions related to the domains? Well, what we are going to do is we are just going to quickly look at a composite function. Let's look at f of g of x. So if I'm evaluating the domain of this function, because g of x is the inside function, I need to check g of x for any restrictions. And if I have any restrictions in my g of x function, they are going to be restricted in this composition function as well. But that's not enough, because I think we saw as we plug g of x into f of x, things can change. So what we need to do is we need to evaluate my function f of g of x, like we did above above in the previous couple problems, and we need to do it completely and after we do that then check for any new restrictions. Okay. It's pretty, it, it sounds complicated when I say it, but all I'm looking for, for this, is if F has a restriction on it in the beginning, I need to make sure that G of X will not output the restriction that the F function has. And if there's a value for X that I can plug into G, that is going to make me output a restriction for F, that also needs to be restricted. And what I mean by that is, is if I come back here, where when I'm doing my h of j of x, or if I'm looking right here, my j of h of 2, see how when I plug 2 into my h function, that 2 outputted the restriction that my j of x function had. Therefore, the domain of this composition function, the domain is all real numbers x, except first and foremost, j of x can't take negative 4. And secondly, if h of x, if there's a number for x I can put in that's going to spit out a negative 4, which happened to be when I put 2 in there, it spit out a negative 4, I also need to restrict that two. So these would be the restrictions for this composite function right there. Sounds complicated, but it's really not all that bad. So more, we'll do two more problems here, and then that is all I'm going to do. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do number one, I'm going to find m of n of x, and what that wants me to do is take the m function, and here's my m function, and I'm going to plug this one into it. So inside here, I'm plugging 1 over 2x plus 4. Well, what does that make me do? That makes me take the m function, which is 3x plus 2. Notice I left myself a little space here because I can see at this x, I'm going to be plugging this big mess in here. So I'm going to get my eraser, I'm going to get rid of this business right here, and I'm going to plug in my 1 over 2x plus 4. And what I need to do first is I need to multiply here. So what's going to happen is that is going to give me 3 over 2x plus 4, okay, and plus 2 and that 2 is over 1. Well, I need common denominators here now, so I'm going to give this one a 2x plus 4, 
and I'm going to give this a 2x plus 4. So what that's going to give me, that's going to give me 3 over 2x plus 4 plus 4x plus 8 over 2x plus 4. Well, that gives me 4x plus 11 over 2x plus 4. Okay? And nothing here is going to reduce. So here's my composition function. So what I'm going to do is I know my domain is going to be all real numbers x. That Now my m of x function here, that's linear. So that's going to have no restrictions. But my n of x function here is a rational function. And everybody hopefully can see that x can never equal negative 2 in my n of x function. Now when I compose these two functions and I put them together, I completely evaluated out the composition function and I can see that this is still the same restriction right here, so my domain will not change for that particular problem right there. Okay, so one last problem. We're going to keep the same m of x and n of x functions. If you want to start out, you say your domain can be all real numbers x except what? Except negative 2. When I, now, remember, I'm just writing this quick because I'm working with both of these. This has no restriction. This one has my negative 2 restriction, so I'm restricting it right away. And now, I'm going to take the n function, okay, my n function, and what I'm going to do is I need to put 3x plus 2 into my n function. Well, what that's going to give me is 1 over 2x plus 4. Left myself a little room here because I knew I'm going to have to come back and I'm going to have to insert 3x plus 2 which is going to give me 1 over 6x plus 4 plus 4. That's going to give me 1 over 6x plus 8. Now, I think Kruger just goofed something up, but my composition function right here is right here. This is my composition function, okay? So I do see I have a new restriction x here cannot equal negative 8 over 6, which is negative 4 thirds, right? So that is definitely going to be a restriction in the end. So I'm going to put comma here. I think this negative 2 is wrong, negative 4 over 3. And so now, do I really need to restrict negative 2? I don't. And the reason why is because when I put negative 2, into the first function, all that's doing is that is going to make me output uh, negative 6 plus 2. So that's going to output a negative 4. Now negative 4 is completely legal to put in there because that doesn't give me a zero denominator. Okay? Now, so that means I got to unexclude that because that one works just fine. The only exclusion is going to be the negative four thirds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of him and I'm going to say negative four thirds. I think I might have just confused you a little bit, but we'll fix it up tomorrow. Um, I'm going to get rid of this and this. So let me let me try to re-explain this why this changed one last time. Okay. Now, because m of x right here, I'm going to get rid of this. My m of x function, my m of x is in the inside, and I can plug anything. Here's my m of x function. It's linear, so its domain is all real numbers. So I can plug any number I want into this function. Okay. Anything I want into here. The only number I can't plug in for x in the end is a number for m of x is when 
3x plus 2, when is that going to equal my restriction over here, which would be negative 2? Check this out. So this is going to be a 3x equals negative 4. x will equal negative 4 thirds. So negative 4 thirds is my only restriction. Okay? I need to make sure the inside function cannot output what the outside function cannot have. And hopefully that helps a little bit. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day.